Uh, I want to see HarperCollins pay their employees. Um, the HarperCollins union is currently on strike. Um, I believe they're still on strike uh, for more equitable pay and, and better like work conditions. Uh, so that's what I would like to see is publishing uh, pay its employees better as in a living wage. Welcome, everyone, to episode 34 of SFF Addicts, where we'll be gazing into the future of literature, discussing what we're excited to read in 2023. And with me today are a trio of familiar voices and faces on SFF Addicts, including Sarah Carruthers, making her sixth appearance on the show. She's one half of the Fiction Fans podcast, and it's an honor to have you here as always, Sarah. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Oh, it's an honor for everyone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and next up is Lily Ellison making her fourth appearance on the show. She's the other half of Fiction Fans Podcast, an opinionated voice in the podcasting landscape, and a welcome addition to any panel here. So good to see you again, Lily. How are you? Oh, it's nice to see you too. It's always fun to hang out with everyone. Yeah. And lastly, the triceps to the, the biceps to my triceps, Connor M. Kaplan. <laughs> Also making his sixth appearance on the show, he's the author of The Sword in the Street and the recently released The Fall is All There Is. So man, congrats on the release of that and uh, welcome back. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, man. It's a pleasure as always. And just want to toss this out to everyone. How are you feeling after everything you've read in 2022? So Sarah, I'll get your opinion first. Uh... I feel like that's a loaded question. I read a lot of really good books. I didn't read as much as I wanted to. I mean, I still read a lot, but um, it feels like I didn't make a dent in my TBR at all. <laughs> um, People keep writing books. How are we I supposed know. to keep up? <laughs> it's really rude of them. Yeah. And you, too, and you do have a podcast. It's like, I'm obligated to read the stuff they're writing. <laughs> oh, and uh, Lily, what about you? How are you feeling after after everything you've read this year? Are you satisfied with your battle against that fucking TBR pile? <laughs> Honestly, I think having the TBR grow is winning, isn't it? If I ran out of stuff to read, I'd be so sad. <laughs> I think it was uh, I think it was last year Arun from Fanfi Addict mentioned that he's like, I'd like to have my TBR at like one hundred, you know. And it's like this very kind of OCD approach to it. And it's like, if something gets to like 102, I just feel really like, oh, you know, and I'm like, man. <laughs> you need a nice round number. Yeah. It's like, I feel like you're stressing yourself out more than you need to. <laughs> and uh, Connor, what about you? Um, I did not read as much as I, as I wanted to. Um, but I think I managed to hit a lot of uh, the books on, on the list that, um, that I, that I wanted to, but um, I didn't. I didn't get many more than that, at least. Yeah, that's totally fair, man. I mean, just because of the doing this podcast, I feel like even though my TBR has grown exponentially, I also managed to like chip off quite a lot. Uh, like yeah. I reread all of the Sandman comics, which was really awesome. Um, yeah. So that was kind of like you know nice 10 volumes just to, to yeah. check that off you know make myself feel better than, <laughs> about that <laughs> which is what comics are always good for but then i managed yeah. to read a, like a ton of stuff from authors that i interviewed and then i also had like every month i gave myself like a uh sort of like um I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this um sort of like a book just for me kind of thing like you know five for the podcast and one for me just to... <laughs> like an indulgence kind of book yeah yeah exactly exactly like that's why i finished mistborn uh by brandon sanderson like the original trilogy uh i read the hero of ages as my like this one's just for me you know <laughs> gotta make myself feel better um are there any aspects of your reading habits that you'd like to change over the course of the next year sarah um, aspects of my reading habits that I'd like to change. Well, I would like to uh, not have to stick to such a strict uh, reading schedule, but that's not going to change because we do have a podcast that has a, a set reading schedule. Yeah. Um, but it, it's difficult for my mood reader heart 
Um, uh, but other than that, I mean, it would honestly, it'd be nice if also if I was less of a mood reader and could just like pick a book and stick with it, but that's unlikely to change too. <laughs> but you are who you are. You got to yeah. keep true to that. Yeah. And Lily, Lily, what about you? Since it's like you and Sarah have your schedule of all the books that you want to read. Um, but do you feel like there are aspects of how things went over tw- over the course of 2022 or like genres or forms of fiction that, that you want to get into more, or maybe you want to cover on your podcast uh, a bit more as well? Well, as far as being true to myself goes, I think I've given up on audiobooks. I'm going to stop trying to make that happen. I'm the same. I'm the same. I don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> I always think like, oh, this would be like a really great way of reading while I'm getting other stuff done. No, it just does not work for me. So I have accepted that that's just not how I do things. <laughs> I'm going to stop forcing it. Yeah. Um, you know, I really miss horror. I think part of it, you know, we do have a very long TBR for our podcast, but we do try to keep things uh, in the realm that both Sarah and I are at least somewhat interested in. <laughs> we have a month for horror, and I think that's very reasonable. <laughs> yeah, but those books are like, there's a witch in it. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> horror light. No great that. <laughs> so uh, I think my personal reading will probably skew more that direction, just because, yeah. of, you know, when I have personal reading. Don't lie, you're not going to do any happens. personal reading. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> You can, you but i'm clinging in. to that unlike i audiobooks yeah you could slip in like a horror novella or something in here and there just to spice it up a little bit i backed uh an indie thing on kickstarter forever ago so every once in a while i just get this like cute little horror collection in the mail Ooh, cool. uh, and i'm like oh this is wonderful and then i still don't read it <laughs> <laughs> no well then it's all your fault <laughs> It's, they're all sitting next to my bed as if that will guilt me into doing it. Mm-hmm. No. Just put some googly, so- googly eyes on it so they can judge you. <laughs> yeah. I'm Every sure they already are. <laughs> These little horror collections just judging you while you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm scrolling through fan fiction on my phone that I'm rereading. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shame. No, it's all good. <laughs> Connor, what about you, bud? Um, I have the opposite problem where, like, I listen, I get, I get uh, way more done when I'm uh, listening to an audiobook, uh, and it's so difficult to actually read like a physical book just because um, the amount of just mental stamina it takes to just sit down and focus <laughs> for long enough. Um, by the time I sit down, I'll read like two sentences, and then I'll start thinking about something else while I'm reading, and then I have to reread that page and everything. And it's just that constantly Mm -hmm. and i want to be able to get better about that uh because i think i internalize i remember it a bit better if i read it on paper but i actually finish it if it's an audiobook um i need an accountability buddy honestly because like (laughs) i I, there was one book i don't think i would have been able to finish uh inda if sarah had not uh, just sort of (laughs) peer pressured me into finishing it while I was living at her house. <laughs> it's not because I dislike it. It's a great book. It's just like it's a brick. It's it was good. Like it took a while to get through it because like I would read a couple pages and everything, and then I get distracted doing something else. And I just I needed that outside pressure to just sort of get through to the end of it. I mean, I will pressure you into reading book two at some point too. Oh, don't I worry. It's on the list that we're going to be talking about. Don't worry Sarah. about it. <laughs> I've already put it on the list for next year. Okay, good. You're Just, doing great. <laughs> yeah. You're halfway there, Connor. You're halfway there, bud. So basically, I need Sarah or some or anyone really to sort of pressure me to read more books. Anyone listening or watching, just go onto Twitter and tweet at Connor and just <laughs> <laughs> go read this book. <laughs> go read this book. Give me it's, shit. I, I need someone who's willing to commit, though, because you can't just say, go read this book and then leave it there, because then okay. I'll read the book and then drop it later. <laughs> and then, like, you got to come back to me, like, a couple of days later. Like, are you still reading it? Right, right. So become friends with Connor and continually yes. harass him <laughs> over a long period of time. I need time. to be harassed. <laughs> what only just, is just harass on. Connor. <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, man. Most people do. It's fine. Yeah. Because, like, man... I I'm on the same page as you, Lily. I just can't do 
audiobooks. Like I tried so many times and I think it's because like I am so devoted to like my little gathering of podcasts that it's like, I don't have room to add more audio stuff in here without feeling like I'm neglecting the podcasting stuff that I want to listen to, you know? And so it's like, I've managed to find a really good balance where I have my Kindle, uh, which I usually read while I'm exercising, like doing elliptical. And it's actually helped me to like speed read. I can speed read Kindle, but I can't speed read a physical book. So I usually have like a physical book going and a Kindle book going at the same time. And then I was also reading Sandman uh, throughout it all. So it's like, I found like a really nice balance there. But last year I said, I'm going to read more short stories. I just, I just gave up on that completely and I'm giving up <laughs> on it again, but Lily, I am going to join you on the horror train because I have not read enough horror and I read the book of accidents by Chuck Wendig and loved it. And I'm like, yeah, I can, I can do with a little bit more horror here and there just to get like a little bit more of that. I don't know. Just anxiety in my life. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not enough lately. Not no. enough has been going wrong. No, like, like a kid and stuff. I don't have enough anxiety in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I want to get into some of the reads that we have on our TBR list already. Uh, but these are the ones that we haven't been able to knock off yet. And, uh, you know, I want to get all your opinions on what are some books that you want to read in 2023 that are already on your TBR, but why are you excited to read them? I'm just going to list off a few of mine. I've got Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. Uh, I've heard amazing things about this book. Um, my friend MJ Kuhn recommended it to me, and it just has a lot of stuff that I love. It's like Chinese mythology, magic like gods and all kinds of you know crazy shit going on with magic there's also a romance i'm not like the biggest romance uh person out there but to have like a cool like romance element to it uh i'm not, I'm not bothered by that shout out to crystal matar love your romance <laughs> um another one is the wind up bird chronicles uh wind up a chronicle by haruki murakami which i am a massive murakami fan but this is one of those that i haven't read and I could do with some like, you know, slight weird sexual shit set in Japan, which Murakami <laughs> does so well. <laughs> this one has like a bit of a detective uh, sort of aspect to it as well, though, uh, as far as like the synopsis uh, conveys, which I'm really excited about because it's like I love Murakami's uh, world building and like the weird and really evocative uh prose that he has in his books um and his stories are just so intricate in the way that he sort of weaves everything together is beautiful so i was just like i need some more murakami in my life another one lily and sarah you're gonna be so happy about this guards guards by terry pratchett um i love the the mort series or like the the death series but i haven't explored too much else in terry pratchett's world and i'm so excited to read guards guards because it's just like set in a city with some like whimsical sort of cop vibes and stuff like that and uh i can't wait to kind of like expand my disc world knowledge and and relationship because it's like i love death as a character and i love terry pratchett's writing style so i cannot wait to just you know maybe i'll read some horror and get all anxious and shit. And then I'll read guards, guards and laugh and make <laughs> up for that. <laughs> uh, and then another one is before they're hanged by Joe Abercrombie. Um, I've only read, uh, the blade itself, uh, which is the first book, uh, in his, uh, original trilogy. Um, and really like, like the character development and everything like that. Glock does a really awesome character and Logan nine fingers as well. So there's like really good character work in there. Um, but the plot was a bit like thin to put it lightly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and so I'm really excited to read before they're hanged to kind of like build on these characters that are really like, but to see the world expand and to see the plot move a, a bit more, uh, and then eventually just kind of like chip off, uh, some more Joe Abercrombie books, uh, as they come along. Uh, and then my last one is fevered star by Rebecca Roanhorse. 
the first book was Black Sun. I loved it. Really, really loved it. That was one of my favorite books from last year. Uh, really cool, like Mesoamerican uh, inspired setting, uh, which I love Mesoamerican history, but she weaves it together with this like crazy, like blood magic and seafaring and amazing world building and really good character work. Uh, and so I'm excited to expand upon that. And then hopefully sometime later in 2023, read the next book when that comes out, which I think is like the third book in the trilogy. Uh, Sarah, what about you? What are some of your TBR heavyweights that you want to chip off in 2023? Um, excuse me. Uh, so my TBR is very long, um, as I've intimated, but some of the um, books that I'm particularly hoping to get to in 2023, um, the first is the uh, Dandelion Dynasty series by Ken Liu. Ooh, um, nice because I have some friends who love the series. They have been encouraging me to read it. Um, they have purchased all of the books for me as Christmas and birthday gifts. Yeah. So I'm like really feeling like I, I need to read these books now. Um, there's also uh, Nona the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is a little bit of a cheat because it is on our podcast schedule. So I know for sure that I will actually get to it. That's okay. Um, <laughs> but I have enjoyed the first two books. I'm looking forward to reading Nona. And then um, hopefully maybe I'll even be up to date by the time, what is it, Electo the Ninth comes out? Um, yeah. uh, after that is uh, Ithaca by Claire North, which again Amazing. is on our podcast schedule. So a little bit of a cheat. Um, I actually started reading this um, this year because I got an arc from um, of it. and. I, I was really enjoying it, um, but thought that Lily needed to read it and that we needed to discuss mm. it. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not actually going to read it right now um, because I think this should be a podcast book. Um, Sorry to interrupt so, one second. I read that book in July and then chat and then had an interview with Claire north in august and it's like while i was reading that book i was thinking about you too because i'm like this is like <laughs> this is such a fiction fans book because it's like full of it's full of badass women but it's just the wit is is strong and it's just uh the, the humor is right up both of your alleys so i'm really excited for you two to talk about that book yeah, I got about like 30 or 40 pages into it before I decided that we really, really had to like discuss this book together. Um, so I, I sadly put it down and I was really sad about it. But I don't like if I know that we're going to read something for the podcast, I don't necessarily like to read it on my own because mm -hmm. I have such limited reading time. You know, yeah. it's I might as well use that space for a book that we're not going to discuss together. Mm -hmm. Um. And then the last book uh, that's at the top of my TBR um, is Be Here to Love Me at the End of the World by Sasha Fletcher, um, which is, I believe, some kind of like post-apocalyptic um, love story. But I um, know very little about it. I just know that I really enjoyed um, a collection of poetry that Sasha Fletcher wrote. Mm -hmm. um, and so I figured that I would read his book. So I, here I am going to read his book. <laughs> Promise. Those are some really good picks though. I'm excited for you two to talk about Ithaca because I, I enjoyed that book so much. And it's just like, there are some really incompetent men in that book. And I feel like you two are going to have a great time <laughs> talking about it. Lily, what about you? What are some of your uh, TBR uh, heavyweights that, that you'd like to read next year? Well, this might surprise you, but my list is very similar to Sarah's. <laughs> really? Um, but one book that was actually, excuse me, on my list last year was The Monsters We Defy by L. Penelope, which came out in no, October, November? Recently. It came out recently. Um, yeah. And so I thought I would be reading it this year and did not. <laughs> so now it's on my list for next year. It's really good. But we didn't, good. we didn't read it last this year for good reasons. Yes. It's worth the wait, but I'm still very excited about yes. it. Okay. <laughs> um, Ithaca, of course, is uh, something I'm also very excited for. But I think Sarah covered that pretty thoroughly. Um, and I also have a lot of Discworld on my TBR. We have finally hit the point in our reread 
where we're finding books that I haven't read yet (laughs) because I have a bunch of like weird gaps. Um, I've read like half of the Discworld books a hundred times and then the other half zero times. Really? (laughs) So uh, some new Terry Pratchett in my life. It's always Nice. nice. Oh, I love that. I love that you and Sarah have these like just this uh, different perspectives of like the Discworld series. And I always love (laughs) hearing your episodes on Discworld. Those are some of my favorites because it's like, even though I haven't read that much Discworld, it's like the books are so fun just based on the few that I've read that hearing other people talk about it is also really fun because everything (laughs) is just coded in absurdity. And it's just, it's beautiful, but I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Sarah, how much, how much disc world have you read? Like, you know, Lily saying that she's read half a hundred times and then read the other half zero times. So there is one disc world book that I have not read. Um, it is the last, uh, Tiffany aching book. Um, and I have not read it because I have been putting off reading it because it's the last disc world book. Okay. Um, which actually, that should be one of my, you know, big TBR <laughs> books um, for 2023 as well. Um, but other than that, I have read all of them. Wow. Okay. So that's like... I have not actually, but I, I have not read the Science of Discworld books. I've, I think I've read the first two, um, which are like the uh, science-based books that he wrote with an actual scientist. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I haven't read all of the like sort of peripheral stuff. Um, that's related to Discworld, but not necessarily a Discworld novel. Right. Um, but you got one more, one more in like the Discworld proper, a bittersweet yes. ending, no? Oh. Yes. Oh, well, hopefully, hopefully you get to it, but maybe, maybe you get Lily to, to read it as well. And then you can have a little, <laughs> you know, a nice conversation about it, a little cry, a lot of laughs. I mean, I don't think that I want to wait until 2024, which is when it is scheduled for the podcast. Um, oh, really? <laughs> I, yeah, bump, would, I would bump, like to read it before then. <laughs> bump that shit up. Bump it up. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then that ruins our order. Oh, whatever. You two are like way over scheduled. I over scheduled. You two are just <laughs> <Yeah>. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant specifically if we bump it up, that ruins our Discworld reading order when we release episodes. Uh, okay. Ah. You can, you can, you can fuck with it a little bit. Nobody will fight <laughs> against you. you My TBR exception. has a personal assistant that keeps it organized for me. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> that means you're mostly reading books that I want to read, but. <laughs> no spontaneity ever. <laughs> Connor, what about you? What are some of your picks for TBR con or sorry, TBR books? See, I got TBR con on my mind. TBR books that you want to take off your list in 2023. Um, I have a lot of uh, mid-series kind of stuff. Um, the first one was uh, Assassin's Fate, which is the last Fitz book by Robin Hobb. Uh, I read the I read the first two in that trilogy earlier this year, uh, and now I'm fine. And I, I started the last book um, last month. Um, but I stopped it because I got distracted by a couple different books that I was juggling at the time. Um, and also, and then also I was like, I had a moment where I was like, I could get back into this, but also it's going to hurt. Everyone who's read this one tells me it's going to hurt more than any other of her books <laughs> have hurt me. And all of them have hurt me to some degree. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for that. It's just inevitable and, pain, but- my friend. But I know that if I let it go on long enough, I'm going to forget what happened in the last two books or something. So I should probably wrap that up in like early 2023, I bet. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's on the list. Uh, The next one is The Fox, which is the second book that comes after Inda by Sherwood Smith. And I hope Um, that you have books three and four on your list, too. (laughs) Well, yeah, I just don't know if I'm going to get to those in 2023. I've got to do one a year. That's a minimum one a year because I know I can knock at least one off the list. Yeah, yearly harassment. Given how thick they are, like you don't I'm know gonna, how long I'm going to push take. for two. You can read two this year. I mean, Stretch goal. you'll have to you'll have to double the harassment. So, like, <laughs> if you have the stamina for it, then yeah, I will. Look, it's Sherwood Smith. I can do that. Sarah, Sarah's got the stamina. She got this. <laughs> I trust Sarah. <laughs> so, like. I got to get that one out of the way. Um, oh man, I made that sound like a like a, like a chore. I didn't mean. Wow, you did actually. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm an a asshole. <laughs> no, 
Books that long are a chore. God, I you get this off my <laughs> get this off my shoulders. But Sarah stops bugging me about this. Leave <laughs> me no. alone. Ge- genuinely, like the the end of books, um, the, 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 at least the one I've read so far is really really good. Um, it is just I've never read anything that's just so like overwhelmingly big from a, such like a, a. It feels like a really tight cast, um, and it's. Um, I, when I read into, I think I, I mentioned this to Sarah while reading it, where it was just sort of like the change, like there were changes in people's circumstances and plot that would come on just very suddenly. And suddenly you're, you're reading a completely different book. And it was just like the wildest experience because I never read anything like it sort of structurally. Um, like you're halfway through, like, and suddenly, suddenly you go from, um, intriguing to then that suddenly there's a new kind of thing that's happening on the high seas and then mm-hmm. what's that the battle of the bands is coming like oh no like, <laughs> it's just like wait when did when did this happen oh my god and it's just you're constantly out of breath playing catch up being like what the fuck is going on it's great i don't know if i'm selling it too well but it's great i'm having i had so much fun with and it. and that makes up for you sounding like so <laughs> yeah just like, i decided if like i gushed a, about like, it like enough a, i could like a prisoner <laughs> Who's being forced to read a book? <laughs> if I gushed about it enough, I would sound like less of an asshole. Yeah. You did good, bud. <laughs> uh, the last, I'm trying to recover from that. The last book I have is um, Rain and Ruin by J.D. Evans. Um, again, this is cheating a bit because I read um, chapter one, I think, last week or the week before. And I really liked it. I absolutely adore a good court intrigue book. And this is shaping up to be exactly like that. And there was a lot of uh, layering of uh, character work in with world building. Um, and I I had a great time with that first chapter. And it was, it was like one of those really, it was the kind of really promising start where like you read it and you just kind of go like, okay, so I'm in the hands of someone who knows what she's doing. Okay, cool. Yeah. I can relax now. This is great. And so I'm really excited for that one as well. Nice, man. Those are some good picks. And uh, yeah, you yeah. you recovered well there. Uh, Thank you. To Sarah, to to appease Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> For shitting on the sequel, though. Um, okay, so we're going to get into our most anticipated new uh, releases for 2023. So these are trad or indie books that are coming out uh, next year. Ones that are not already on our TBRs, but will be eventually. Um, we can cycle through and just do do like a bit of a round robin. So I'll start with one and then we'll uh, each say one. But yeah, just tell me why you are excited to read this book um, and say a little bit about uh, what it, what it's a, um, what its plot is and, and that kind of stuff or what you know about it in terms of uh plot and if it's just a synopsis you can you can kind of paraphrase a little bit as well uh my first pick is lords of uncreation by adrian tchaikovsky this is book three in the uh, final architecture series shards of earth is book one eyes of the void is book two and then lords of uncreation is the finale this was eyes of the void was one of my favorite reads of this year and adrian tchaikovsky is just a fucking mad genius when it comes to I, he writes so fast to begin with but then his stories are always so satisfying that i'm like how can you write so fast and be that good right you fast know what I mean? and well at the same yeah, time it's, like, damn it's it, insane man. damn it but eyes of the void was fantastic and 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 kind of built on this really amazing uh far future space opera world building of shards of earth there's lots of alien species and there's a really fucking awesome enemy, which is essentially like giant crystal spheres called the architects who reshape planets in a genocidal form of artistic expression. But when they reshape planets, they obviously like kill everyone and everything on that planet. And so there's this really like massive threat that people face when an architect shows up. Um, but it's kind of, cool how he's built this series around this mystery of like where did the architects come from and why are they doing what they're doing you know and who is potentially in control of them are they just sort of like messengers uh who are enacting the will of of something grander so it has this really big cosmic scale but the mysteries are what are really pulling me through 
and I'm super excited to read Lords of Uncreation because I know Tchaikovsky is going to answer all of these looming questions and, and wrap it up in, you know, what he's done with books one and two, which is great action, really fun characters, lots of personality, but also lots of science, which I love and biology and weird aliens and all kinds of crazy shit. So that's my number one pick. And Sarah, I'll toss it to you for yours. So my number one pick is uh, Exit Ghost by Jennifer Donahue. Um, I've not read any of her full-length novels. I'm not actually sure if she has any full-length novels. Um, but she is the author of um, a uh, cyberpunk series called Run with the Hunted uh, that I really, really love. Um, there is, it's a series of short novellas. Um, that uh follow this these um three women who basically do crime but it's like cozy cyberpunk um <laughs> and that. it's it's really great i don't think that exit ghost is going to be anything like it at all um but i i love that series so much and i've loved the other short story of hers um that i've read that i'm really excited to read something that she's written that's a different genre um this is uh, I think she's described it as witchy girl Hamlet. Uh, so that should be fun. Ooh. That sounds fantastic. I love cozy cyberpunk. It's just like things are getting really cozy lately across all fronts, but I've never heard it paired with cyberpunk before. <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> but I, I really feel like, and we had a, a whole episode where we discussed this um, on fiction fans, but I really feel like because um, like you, there's nothing, even though bad things happen in that series, there's nothing really bad that's going to happen to the characters. Like, they're always going to come out okay. So it's cozy, but okay. still cyberpunk. Nice. All right. I like that aesthetic. I'm going to look into this. Uh, <laughs> Lily, what about you? Well, Sarah was very sweet and didn't steal the one that we were fighting over. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Ethera Grave is coming out next year, which is the third book in the Nofek Gloss. Is it? It's the Graven. No, the it's Graven. the Graven trilogy by Essa Hansen, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And I did um, consider that for one of mine. <laughs> We've been texting all day, like which one of us gets this one? <laughs> <laughs> Adored the first two books. They are very long, and it's a series. Both of thing. Both are things that I often complain about at length uh so you know they got to be good you complain if, at length um, about length yes <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um but i'm not unreasonable sometimes it's worth it and this series is worth it i haven't read it but like what's the what's the it's space opera kind of sci-fi right yeah tell me tell me a bit about um, it oh gosh <laughs> i would it changes so dramatically it starts Sarah, how do you even begin? <laughs> uh, I'd I'd say yes, it's space opera, um, but it also has a, this big aspect of found family um, to it. And um, like Lily says, it does change kind of throughout the series, but it always follows this core group, um, and it starts off with kind of a smaller story and then it expands and expands mm. rapidly. Um, yeah. And I, I did feel like the first, like half of the first book was really slow to um, get into. Like I had a lot of trouble with it. Um, but once you get past that, it, it is just nonstop action. Um, and it's really compelling. Um, you like, you can't put it down. Nice. And, and this is a trilogy. So this is the last book in the trilogy. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is one I've been meeting to pick up because um, Essa is just like really cool person on, on Twitter. And, you know, I love space opera. So this is like definitely right up my alley. Also, she works for Skywalker Sound. And I'm like, that's badass. and she does falconry. Yeah. yeah. I keep trying to get uh, my fiance to, to find her and be like, you have to befriend her. <laughs> she's right there. <laughs> yeah, she's super cool. I like that pick. And uh, Connor, what about you? 
Um, I the first book I have is a uh, Outlaw Mage by K Vioso, specifically yeah, just nice. because it K v, K wrote it. Like, cause K is She's like awesome, literally too. one of the most talented writers that I've ever read in any genre. Um, I've specifically avoided looking at looking at like what it's about because I just don't. I, I like I want to go in blind mm-hmm. because like K writes the kind of really in depth work where it's like you're really rewarded if like you read closely and pay attention. Yeah, and I, w- I want to be able to go in like not knowing anything and be and, and see how much I can pick up on because uh, it's just like I'm such a huge fan of all the other stuff that K's done that I I really just want to see. Um, I like Kay could write about like a book about telephone books or something like that, and I would still like check it out and be like, "This is the coolest thing I've ever read." And so I'm just that's like an automatic like, "Okay, you're on the list. You got it." Yeah, I that's, loved. Uh, well, I've only read the the first book in the the Bitch Queen Chronicles, but her character work is super strong, and her world building is awesome, and she's just so fantastic. damn nice in person and really funny too. Oh, she's great. Yeah. Oh, we, we, I could just, just I could just gush about Kay specifically. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Forget the books. We're just gonna gush about Kay. <laughs> <laughs> it was maybe not the best forethought. Like I have a number of books for 2023. I did pick one that I'm intentionally avoiding information about, so I can go and and surprise myself. So it makes it very difficult to talk about. So I probably could plan that a little bit better. But as long as I have a chance to gush about Kay, then yeah. And then again, the title is pretty like clear outlaw mage it's like you kind of you kind of know you kind of <laughs> know be at least for. two things in. yeah and also she did a i think she did a kickstarter for the audio book yeah i saw that um yeah and and that one went super well so i'm like i'm really happy for for k about that yeah, but i'm, I'm, that I'm really definitely cool excited too. to read that as well and continue the bitch yeah. queen chronicles because that series is great so far oh they're so good oh my god i i read um the third book um La- like around april of last year and it was just one of the most sort of intense reading experiences i ever went through it was just like an emotional fucking roller coaster oh so great Connor likes to punish himself with his books if anyone has <laughs> <Yeah>, <laughs> no i like books that hurt me <laughs> just hurt me man um i'll get into my next one which is also the third book in a trilogy but a not very very different from the final architecture but this is The Bone Shard War by Andrea Stewart. Love, 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 love books one and two. And once again, it's like really strong character work. I'm a big character driven reader. So when I have stories where I can like really latch onto the characters, I'm all for it. But the characters in this book, this is fantasy uh, set in sort of an Asian inspired, um, sort of like migrating archipelago of islands uh but the way that andrea weaves plot and character and mythology and history and magic in such a seamless way is just brilliant it's like everything has a purpose whether it's like the way that the islands uh move and 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 function to the minerals that that certain like empires mine for you know the purposes of of maritime travel uh but the way that that you know might potentially tie into the ma- the magic and the mythology uh and the way that the animal companions like I love animal companions and the way that the animal companions is like they have a very very clear well, not a clear purpose. It's like they clearly have purpose, but there's so much mystery around everything. And I'm so excited for the third book to finally unravel a lot of these mysteries of like, you know, how does like the elemental magic work? But then there's also this really, really cool and very brutal magic system, which is kind of like more akin to coding, I would say, where it's like... that's. All of the people. <laughs> that's what it reminded me of a yeah. little bit when I I've only read the first book, but it definitely seemed very like computer based. Yeah, because it's like basically every citizen has to have like a chip of their skull taken, like like basically a piece of skull chipped out, and then that little shard of bone is then in you know uh uh what's the word? I'm just going to say coded It's basically like, like scratched into it and etched into the bone in order to 
enact like a certain command in these like really fucked up like Frankenstein uh you know like biological automatons essentially uh but everything is so well laid out because the characters their motivations change but in a very natural way no one's so perfectly good or bad but everyone has this sort of uh moral compass that moves in a natural way with the story and so i'm just like amazed at andrew's ability to constantly uh give everything a purpose and all the mysteries that she's built up i know she's going to do a kick-ass job of answering all of that in book three so i'm really really excited to read that uh sarah what's your next pick your dog's snoring it's very cute. <laughs> yes they are <laughs> Sarah's like, what is that noise it's mr squeak being loud as usual he's a him. pug he's got a fucked up respiratory <laughs> tra- <laughs> <laughs> um yeah apologies for the snoring but okay. my next pick is um a witch's guide to fake dating a demon by Ooh. sarah holly uh and i f- again i forget how i found this book i think um Someone retweeted a like a snippet of it um, that uh, Sarah Holly had posted on Twitter that was some kind of like really funny excerpt from a like a sex scene or something. It was something along those lines, um, and it sounded fun. And I like books that um, sometimes I can just turn my brain off and enjoy. Get um, sexy. So, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to this one. It's about, um, there's this witch. She's supposed to be really powerful, but basically she doesn't care much about witching things. She just wants to like bake. Um, she accidentally summons a demon and then she's too afraid to confess to her mother that she summoned this demon. So she tells her mother that they're dating. Oh my God. That sounds incredible. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Wow. Okay, and that does not count as a horror pick, Sarah. I'm sorry. It is no, it's not. It's I mean, this is this is firmly romance. It's not a horror novel. <laughs> At least a, I'm assuming it's not a horror novel. Obviously, I haven't read it yet. Maybe it's a lot darker than it sounds, but I somehow doubt that. It has a witch and a demon. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically where our like uh, criteria is. <laughs> and we're a little I'll more discerning it. than that when we pick our horror novels. <laughs> Not by much, maybe, but no. And my favorite horror movies, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I feel like we need to elaborate on this, but maybe not today. <laughs> no, not actually. I'm, I'm being facetious. I swear to God. Connor just traumatized by pumpkin <laughs> patches. <laughs> <laughs> by this metric, I'm saying it qualifies as horror. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good movie, though. Yeah, or it's for like super short. I think it's like 20 minutes or something. Um, anyways, Charlie Brown aside, Lily, what's your next pick? Well, I don't know much about this book, but it sounds fun. It's episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. Comes out next year. Um, it's described as House of Leaves meets Haunting of Hill House. Ooh. Uh, and I don't always go for ghosts. That's usually not like my favorite brand of horror. Mm-hmm. Um, but this book apparently is going to follow paranormal researchers trying to prove that this location is haunted. And then apparently things go off the rails. So sounds super neat. Uh, those comparisons definitely intrigue me. So I'm excited to see what what's going on with it. Have you read anything else by that author? I haven't. What what was it? With that... a comp like that, how could I? <laughs> <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you find this one? Um, I knew that you were going to ask us what our uh, reading habits we wanted to change would be, and so I was like, "Horror." I should actually read some horror, shouldn't I? <laughs> that sounds really cool, though. Episode thirteen is the name of mm-hmm. it. Very because nice. it's the thirteenth episode of their paranormal TV show. Ah, okay. I like this. Kind of has like um. Ah, uh, what was the? There are these like all these horror movies that kind of center around like people who go to like haunted houses with like uh, all the scanners and 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 shit like that. So it definitely has mm-hmm. it definitely has that like or there's the reality shows that are like ghost hunters and yeah and all that kind of stuff. So for sure, I can imagine that he's like playing on 
the tropes within all of that to, to maybe bring like a little bit of humor to it, but at the same time, just like ramp up the actual horror. Cause those ghost hunter shows usually end just, uh, uh, someone screaming and being like, did you see the ghost? And it's like, no one caught it on camera. Uh. <laughs> I mean, like paranormal activity i guess that's not technically ghosts but that sort of found footage thing doesn't mm-hmm. usually do it for me mm-hmm. um but i shouldn't compare movies to books yeah. so maybe in book form it will be different nice. always gotta try something new right fingers yeah. crossed that's a good one <laughs> connor what about you bud um i have i think this was also on my list for 2022 it's uh the legacy of brick and bone uh yeah. by crystal matar uh which <laughs> i was already hyped for obviously for um going the hype's only it, building. But, yeah I, actually <laughs> earlier today um i did a beta read on the first 1000 uh, 1000 words uh or, no a hundred thousand words <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say this is crystal. Like one thousand is <laughs> yeah, like gonna, nothing, yeah. man. A <laughs> hundred thousand. The shortest work yet. She's never done anything shorter. It's it's the, it's the greatest feat she's ever built. Is writing something short. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a hundred thousand words. I did the first hundred thousand words of uh, like three hundred nineteen pages. I finished earlier this afternoon and sent it back. I think she's currently sending me like her thoughts on my notes, like as we're recording. Mm-hmm. Um, and like that more than anything else, I was like, holy shit, this book is going to be insane. Holy fuck. Yeah. I, um, I really enjoyed legacy of, of the bright wash and, and oh, it was so good. Crystal is a, she's a twisted one. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little scared for brick and bone. Like Why? what, what oh, is she going to put everyone through? It's intense. It's it's wild. It's I I'm trying to figure out how to how to talk about it without spoiling anything now. Which no, I, don't, was not I, don't hear, I mean I don't want to hear anything it. about it because I want to go in, you know, not blind, but like well, Yeah. No, I'm not, not I don't I'm not gonna spoil but... any plot details or anything. But like it was without saying anything that happens in the book, reading those first three hundred pages and to be clear, this could all change by the time it gets out. Like, it could be a completely different book by the time it goes out to, to everyone else. So, like, take that with a grain of salt here. But, like, when I was reading those first 200 pages, um, like, the last few days, it was basically just the feeling of, like, you know, like, um, if you, you see, like, a magic trick and then, like, someone's, like, walking you through after it's done like how they went about it and everything and yeah. you're learning all of these different secrets and like oh holy shit oh holy shit that was happening wait wait no but that is just it's just that feeling for 300 pages like holy shit how many dominoes are being stacked here this is going to go catastrophic oh it's so cool uh, it's what, so cool what is Chris going to put us through it's it's insane well for anyone I can't, I, Go ahead, Connor. Um, it's. I'm trying to figure out um, how to explain the plot without actually like. Uh, spoiling well, maybe maybe tell any. people a little bit about Legacy of the Bright Wash so they get an idea of. Yeah, of the, it's, of the world, um, and then we we right. won't spoil anything for Legacy of Brick and Bone, but. All right, that uh, Bright Wash was about Tasha Way Blackwood, uh, who's like basically a fantasy cop um who needs to who uh through uh, a romance with um with uh, a woman named stella who's a healer um basically learns about like how corrupt the system is and everything um and there's and that the how do you I, am I allowed to spoil brightwash no maybe okay <laughs> well, he learns that there's some fucked up shit going he learns there's some fucked up shit going on when they find a dead body and there's that has to like unravel the murder mystery and as the murder mystery unravels it turns out there are bigger forces at work and it's also very that, it's yeah it's, it's 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 so cool it's really great and it's um, been a while since i read it but if i am recalling correctly it takes place in a world where magic is sort of considered gross mm-hmm. and dirty yeah, yeah. right mm-hmm. uh, and that's yeah. like one of the main sort of conversations happening in the novel yeah, yeah, and she said it in sort of like a secondary world analog of, of, I guess, like, it would be probably like 19th century uh, Canada, like around kind of like Montreal. Yeah, I think 1880s and, and, kind of thing. Yeah, like around like Montreal and stuff like that. So it kind of has like a more, so it's gas lamp fantasy. It has more of like yeah. a, almost like a 
um, new world Victorian vibe to it. And there's a lot of conversation about like, uh, indigenous, uh, peoples and, and the relationship between like government and, and, um, indigenous, uh, tribes and, and stuff like that. And like you said, Lily, this like idea of magic as being this like filthy kind of thing really plays into, into the, all of that. But yeah, it's man. like Dennis Lehane by way of David Gebel. Yeah. Oh, and Crystal will be so happy that you said that she loves yeah. David Gemmel. <laughs> yeah. You had that comp ready, didn't you? Yeah, no, that was in my back pocket <laughs> <laughs> specifically Boom. for this. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that as well. Because uh, Crystal's like a, a good friend of the show and, and a really awesome person. But yeah, she's uh, she's she's pretty twisted. So I know she's going to throw some heavy punches with uh, Legacy oh, of yeah. and Bone. The last, uh, I think, maybe 50 pages of the, the beta read was just basically just like a bunch of exclamation marks. Or, Holy fuck, or, you can't do this to me. <laughs> I sounded like I was being tortured in a lot of the last notes. Of course you were, man. That's how you like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Awesome. Well, uh, I'll get into my last pick, which is Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. Uh, with the Greenbone Saga, which was uh, Jade City, Jade War, and Jade Legacy. Speaking of books that torture you, that was an emotional <laughs> roller coaster, but I loved it <laughs> so much. It was so good, man. Uh, but that that series basically just catapulted to like my top five fantasy series of all time. Uh, and Untethered Sky is like a really cool sounding detour from what she's been doing before but with sort of uh craft stuff that she's really excelled at so untethered sky is a novella so it's a lot shorter whereas like all of the Greenbone saga books are like 550 600 pages plus uh jade legacy is like pretty pretty chunky as well but this is you know like around 200 250 pages but it sounds so freaking cool because it's like a morally grave prota- protagonist, which Fonda does really well, but basically it's set in this fantasy world where, you know, people ride, they're called rocks, but I think they're like, they're basically like giant birds and they hunt manticore. And it's this, the, the whole plot sounds really cool in the sense of like, um, there's this like revenge aspect to it where a manticore killed her her mother and and baby brother and so it's kind of like this revenge tale set this like obsessive revenge tale set in this really cool secondary world fantasy where the main character is like hunting manticore and so it's like cool because there's this parallel between like who's the real monster here which I'm really excited to 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 find out. It's like the monster hunter or the monster, like who's really the monster in this situation. And I just love the idea of like, you know, I, I was a big fan of the monster hunter uh, video games uh, for a really long time. And I just like love the idea of monster hunters. And I think it's really cool. So to see Fonda Lee build this secondary world and have something that I know she could do really well, which is like be concise in the novella format. And 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 then just have like some Manticore fights and all that kind of fun stuff. I'm really really excited for that. Um, I got an arc of it, but I need to get a, f- a few other things off of my TVR before I get to it. But I know it's like that's going to be a really nice like between two chunkier novels. Like pick up this novella and just have a really really fun time. Um, Sarah, what's your last pick? My last pick is The Cleaving by Juliet McKenna, which is um, an Arthurian retelling that focuses on the women of um, Arthurian mythology. So uh, Nimue, Igraine, Morgana, and Guinevere. And um, I've not read anything by um, Juliet McKenna, but I've heard good things. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've also always been interested in Arthurian mythology. I read a lot of um, retellings when I was younger as as a child. So Mm -hmm. like the Crystal Caves by Mary Stewart, you know, the Miss of Avalon, uh, even though she turned out, Marion Zimmer Bradley turned out to be a horrible person. I didn't know that yeah. when I was reading them. Um, and uh, there's also another series of books about Merlin. I forget who the author was, but 
So like this has been a really formative story for for me as a reader, hmm. um, and I'm looking forward to reading another iteration of it. Yeah. Also, uh, I should add the cover art is done by Chris Panettiere, who is a lovely, wonderful human being what? with some. Uh, he's a fantastic artist and also a, a really great author. So um, that also was uh, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to pick up the book. Wow. I had no idea that Chris did the art for that. Yeah. Because <laughs> Chris, Chris is fantastic. Yeah. I, like I, I know you too, Lily and Sarah, you've chatted with him. I had mm-hmm. him on uh, earlier this year. We just like shot the shit about tattoos and art and all kinds of like weird stuff like bug sex he is like the most like multi-talented person it's unfair for one person to be so talented so he's he's a lawyer by day this sounds like some weird sff superman shit but he's a lawyer by day (laughs) and he actually was one of like the big uh people who one of the one of the lawyers who like um worked on this like big lawsuit case against Johnson and Johnson uh and helped helped uh helped the um the the people who were suing Johnson and Johnson win but then it's like also he's an amazing artist he's an amazing artist so like paints and does like really cool like uh stipple and digital um like illustrations and stuff and does like heavy metal band album artwork and writes like super weird books about fucking like you know vampires and and you know bug sex and and weird aliens and all kinds of shit and then to like yeah i'm just so excited i need to i need to check out the artwork for this because chris is a great guy and juliet is also juliet is also really nice yeah um yeah juliet is like she's mostly written sort of like uh cozier fantasy we're back to cozy um but also like she's super into uh sort of like history and mythology of like the british isles so like celtic uh and celtic mythology and like all those legends and kind of stuff so she does a really cool job of weaving all of that uh that stuff together also like the green so it, man i don't know if any of you have heard of like the green man sort of mythology yeah. in the uk she's really she has like a whole series about that as well i yeah, found so, out about her uh, in early 2020 when uh my editor on sword in the street jonathan oliver was like use her as a comp title <laughs> sarah you were gonna say something i was gonna say it makes sense then that she would write a book on uh, a retelling of arthurian mythology yeah I'm trying to remember, I like, I, I swear I read a book about like a series about Merlin when I was younger as well. I can, um, I can get up and go into my um, bookcase and find the book and show you <laughs> which one I think it is. Is it the series by T.A. Barron? Yes, that yeah, was it. Yeah, because that's the one I remember yeah. as well. I'm looking like the lost years of Merlin and it's yeah. like him with like an, I, I remember like him with his animal companion, with his like hawk companion. On yeah, the and then my also, sister read that. Also, I think uh, Diana Wynne Jones has um, a series that is not Arthurian legend, but the like the head wizard or whatever is called the Merlin. Um, the book is called the Merlin Conspiracy. It fits in broadly with her Crestomancy books, I believe. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of Arthurian related um, or or tangentially related books mm-hmm. out there. No, oh, this one sounds really cool. That's a great pick. And uh, Lily, what about you? What's your number three? Martha Wells is coming out with a fantasy novel. (laughs) For like in the first time in a long time. Yeah. Um, I've only read one of the Murderbot novellas, Mm -hmm. but loved it. So very, very excited. Uh, It's for Witch King is what it's called. I did actually read the summary, but I didn't need to, you know. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty, it's like, it's like Outlaw Mage. It's pretty (laughs) self-explanatory. What has you excited about Witch King? Because that's like, I have a few runners up as well. And Witch King is one of mine. What, what, what are you excited to, why are you excited to read Witch King? Well, I've been meaning to read more Martha Wells just in general. And a new book coming out is a great opportunity for that. Plus, I do generally tend to lean fantasy over Mm -hmm. sci-fi. So it feels like she wrote this for me. 
<laughs> Hopefully there's going to be like a character who's as, you know, antisocial and sassy as as the aforementioned murder <laughs> bot because that's that's another series where it's like i read that and i think of you too because i'm like this is this is just <laughs> sassy pants central this is great <laughs> but i'm also excited to read witch king because it's like she has uh a bunch of fantasy books that she's that she released before she mm -hmm. wrote the murder bot diaries and before she got more of this like uh big acclaim and stuff like that um but she's just a really good storyteller in terms of like very concise and, and very purposeful in, in her prose no bullshit kind of kind of vibes um but her world building is fantastic so it's like really cool um to think like how is she going to apply everything she's learned from the murder bot diaries into a new fantasy world full of magic and like I feel like there's like some necromancy vibes going on and stuff like that. So I'm really, I'm stoked about that one too. <laughs> yeah. And Connor, what about you? What is your number three? All right. Um, my last one was a uh, fool's promise by Angela board, which I'm also a bit biased stone. Cause I, <laughs> I beta went that one back in April. It has, this one has definitely like for sure changed dramatically since I last read it. Um, I know a lot of the biggest twists that are going to be happening. Mm -hmm. um, but like, basically this is the kind of book where it's like, you got to arrive wearing, wearing a tinfoil hat, like bring, bring your own tinfoil to this book. It's absolutely, it's incredible. It's Angela writes the most, the twistiest stories uh, where like, it's, it really rewards a close eye where it's like, if you can like really pay attention to some of the finer details and everything you start to figure out it's you can start putting the pieces together of where things are going there's, mm -hmm. that there's like a grander thing happening behind the scenes and then like it's just this sense of mounting dread and then suddenly like it's the the last third of any angela board book is just the most sort of um insane thing you'll ever read because everything just be just becomes a train wreck and it's just phenomenal i love it and i i can't wait to see uh what it looks like when it's uh been um sort of edited and revised because it is still going to change very thoroughly and everything and i'm mm -hmm. just really excited to actually read what the final product looks like no wonder you don't read that many books because you beta read like these monstrous <laughs> <laughs> yeah. angela board and crystal matar <laughs> Basically, yeah. Most, the, I don't think I've ever beta read anything that was under like a hundred and twenty thousand words. Damn. So like, you most of the stuff I beta read is five hundred pages on its own. Not, not, I'm not only reading; I'm adding commentary and suggestions and stuff. Yeah. What? Uh. What's What's this new book about? Because I think Jonathan Navarre told me, uh, that he was that he was reading it as well, and it's kind of got like cold war spy vibes to oh it. no that's uh that Is was that uh, through dream so dark that was released okay. um back in october okay, that so one's, that one was on my uh, 2022 list and that was all that was phenomenal that was one one of if okay. not my the favorite read of the year for me nice okay so this one is a sequel to fortune's fool Yes, this is the one that's the sequel to the Fortune to Fortune's Fool. Um, this one is sort of like um, it's picks up where, where Fortune's Fool left off, but it's also um, examining a lot more about Arsenal's past and everything that he's been through. Um, and it's where a lot of um, like basically she Andy's up on everything. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> um, there are a lot. It's basically there's the fallout. It's basically exploring the fallout of of everything that happened towards the end of uh, Fortune's Fool, uh, while simultaneously exploring Arsenal's past. And um, there may be more of a some stuff of a Kira Kira's past as a Guevara, but, but that was that's part of a revision that I do not know about, so I probably shouldn't comment on it too deeply. You're also cheating a little bit. It's like you've read these <laughs> yeah, in 2022, just a little man. Bit. Just a bit. They're not out yet. But you're cheating. They're not out yet, so they technically count. I do not know what the final products look like, so for all I know, they're going to be completely different by the time they actually get to the public. That's true. And then and then Crystal and Angela can just warp your mind all over again. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> thought you were getting this, but now, now, now it's a space opera or some shit. Yeah, because those two, it's like a knockout punch. It's like they don't, they don't fuck around. Crystal nor yeah, Angela. 
They're great. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I'm going to throw a few runners up out there, just a, a couple more books that I'm really excited about. Uh, Lily, you already mentioned Witch King by Martha Wells. Uh, there's also Descendant Machine by Gareth L. Powell, which is like a standalone uh, follow up to Stars and Bones. So this is like a new series that he's writing where it's like all set in the same universe, but each book is a, is a standalone. So Stars and Bones was really fantastic and Descendant Machine is, uh, sounds to be really cool as well. And then Thick as Thieves by MJ Kuhn. I really loved Among Thieves. It was just like a ton of fun and a lot of swearing and a lot of betrayal and heists and just just people fucking each other over it's a good time it is a damn fun book uh but thick as thieves is out in july and i'm really excited to to read that as well which is cool because it's like this is just a duology which you don't see as much anymore um just a good duology man just two books and and lily's happy you know (laughs) 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 so i'm excited to like see how this world expands but at the same time know that this is like a definitive end to this particular uh story uh so those are my picks i don't know if any of you have any more uh runners up that you want to mention or anything that comes to mind i do but i don't know if the title is finalized sarah is is krr lockhaven's book do we know the title for that i could just um, say the sequel <laughs> to his first of <laughs> the first in the trilogy um, yeah i'm i'm not sure if the title is final or not but that's it- coming out in is this the sequel to what is it? The Marauders, the the Marauders, the daughter and the dragon. Yes. Um, I have read it or a version of it, mm-hmm. um, but I'm really excited to see what the final version looks like. Uh, and I just, I love that series so much. The world is so like sweet and whimsical. Mm-hmm. I haven't read the first book, but, but uh, everyone, everyone at fan Addict who's, uh who knows kr is like yeah he's a great guy and you know it's like seafaring and all that fun stuff sarah what about do you know do you have any uh any runners up or anything else that you can think of um i mean lily mentioned if you're a grave uh by essa hansen which was definitely on my list of books that i'm super excited about uh, there's also, um, similar to um, A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon, there's another book by Jenna Levine, I believe is the author, called um, uh, My Roommate's a Vampire, which is another kind of like turn your brain off book. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm looking forward to that because it sounds like fun. And I, as I have said, I like to have books where I don't have to think during them. Mm-hmm. Now, when um, you say turn your brain off, do you just mean they aren't stressful? I mean, they they aren't stressful, and you also, I think, don't have to think too deeply about, like, any intrigue that's going on. Mm. They're not like an Angela Board or Crystal Matar book that has, <laughs> right. you know, a lot of twists coming right. that you are, are trying to um, to figure out as you go along. Much more like straightforward narrative kind of thing. Yeah, just just like fun, you know, go along you read it in, in an afternoon, don't think too hard about it. Yeah. That sounds cool. And Connor, do you have any any uh, honorable mentions, runners up? Um, nothing off the top of my head that was coming out in twenty twenty three. Though I do need to probably read a Terry Pratchett book at some point because I have not done that ever. You told uh, Sarah that you would, and you were at her house. You I know. Chance, I thought there'd man. be more pressure. I thought there'd be more pressure this year. <laughs> She's using up so. all her pressure for Sherwood Smith. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> She only has so I, much. I love, I love Terry Pratchett, but Terry Pratchett doesn't need more readership. Inda needs more readership. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, if if anyone wants to harass me to read some Terry Pratchett, you are welcome to. I, I, I really got to get on that. I owe it to myself. I think you would once really you finish. I think you should once start you with finished more. reading. <laughs> Sorry, Mort? Adrian. No, it's okay. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Once you've finished reading um, the Inda series, then I will start harassing you about Terry Pratchett. <laughs> it's in like well, three, three or years. four years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In 2027, when I finally finish the Inda series. Yeah. No, you because you're going to read two of the books to, uh, this year or in 2023. I like that. Just one about book. This. We're looking at 2025. You have but... More faith in me than I do. <laughs> yeah. But Connor, I think you should start with Mort. Mort is like a really. No? Okay, so for the two people who have read a ton 
of <laughs> Terry Pratchett, what is your ideal like entry point? For someone like I mean, Connor, at least. I agree that the Death series is great. I just really dislike Mort. I think you should go with, start with the second one in the Death series if you're going to go with Death. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that's a really complicated question that um, deserves its own podcast episode. <laughs> we have a podcast episode on where you should start <laughs> Terry Pratchett. I, think I'll link to it. I had a conversation with Sarah about this when I was living at her house, and the, we settled on, I think, Small Gods, I think. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a very that, good one. That is a good place to start. But, but it really Monsters Regiment like, has a lot of hijinks that I think you'd enjoy. Yeah, Monsters I know Regiment is also good. The whole plot of Monsters Regiment, so I don't know if it's and is, is it as fun if you know what happens? Yeah, I think rereading so. books is a thing. Okay. <laughs> like <laughs> No, I mean there's sometimes you read a book and you know when you, once you know the twist, you're just like, eh, it, I mean, I don't know if Terry Patrick would get the reception he's constantly received if he read one of those books where you read it once and the, the sort of magic is kind of spoiled. So I should probably have more faith in his ability as a writer then. <laughs> considering all the praise i hear about him yeah well, it's I, very much about the journey yeah well i i started with mort and then i read small gods and so now i'm gonna read guards guards so it's like i'm you know maybe it's a bit of a, a not the the cleanest entry into into terry pratchett but it's like <laughs> i really I actually really liked mort even though mort is like a little turd death is amazing <laughs> yes it's, and it's he def- likes cats it's definitely an accepted entry point into okay. disc world um we have our issues with it but it's a very beloved book obviously le- the rest of the world doesn't or a large portion of the world doesn't feel the way that we do about it at least i followed <laughs> it up with small with a uh, small gods i feel like that's a pretty yeah <laughs> yeah and then guards guards i'm really excited to read it's like i i there was the bbc adaptation i think that was like mm-hmm. pretty pretty like routinely panned for being just like whatever. oh yeah yeah um, i have i think what was it called the that. watch yeah it yeah. was called yeah. the watch um, and it was based on the the series of books that's the watch books um but they made some pretty significant i should have the caveat i have not watched it but i have heard that they made some pretty significant changes to characters and storylines and um they they did some things that meant that the fandom was uh, kind of up in arms and not behind them. I heard his daughter was not a fan of it. Yeah, and they they made some comments that that did not endear themselves to Terry Pratchett Ooh. readers. Um, but again, that's kind of off topic, so, so I won't yeah. get sidetracked. The well, Hogfather adaptation is very good, though. So yeah, well, there's a Hogfather adaptation. adaptation? Hell yeah, there wow. is. And it's I didn't know really that. long and very good. <laughs> oh, that sounds incredible. I mean, you saw what was on the TV. Oh, that sounds right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm excited to read more Terry Pratchett. I'm going to try and read like at least two Terry Pratchett books next year. I mean, that just sounds like after it's one. Because apparently yeah. I have to read yes. two in yeah. the book. Because like, I got Guards, Guards, and then I have uh, Death Number Two. Um. Mm-hmm. What's the name of Death? What's the title of Reaper Death? Reaper Man? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's Reaper Man. Yeah. And they got such like great covers because they have those like hardcover Galants uh ones. And it's like Yeah, those covers are lovely. Oh, they're so so cool. Um so yeah, I'm gonna read that. I'm gonna get a little bit of guards guards and some some more death in my life this year. Um just wanna ask all of you, is there anything else uh that you want to see more of in the next year or so in terms of, you know, uh, trends and 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 things that you're seeing in the SFF in the SFF world, uh, Sarah. Do you have anything in mind? Uh, I want to see Harper Collins pay their employees. Um, yeah. The Harper Collins Union is currently on strike. Yep. Um, I believe they're still on strike uh, for more equitable pay and and better like work conditions. Uh, so that's what I would like to see: is publishing uh, pay its employees better, as in a living wage. That's yeah. a very, very good one. Yeah. Cause I like that is directly in like the SFF world. And it's like, I I've had conversations with uh, author friends recently, just about like how people who work in publishing are super passionate, but they just get fucked over in terms of what they earn versus what they deserve. And you know, there was like also this thing recently about Tor 
uh, oh yeah, the, the, AI the Christopher thing. Christopher Paolini book cover, where it's like, yeah. oh, we found out it was made by an AI, but it's like production we're not constraints. Gonna do we're not going to do it. Basically, it's just like the most half-assed apology ever. It's and I'm like, hard. Do, do you realize like Christopher Paolini is like a fucking like just like multi-million seller? He wrote fucking Aragon, and you can't like figure out a new a new cover um, in time on the other hand i feel like he could have put more pressure on them too because he yeah. had some statements that yes they were supportive of of actual artists mm -hmm. but it doesn't sound like he has been putting pressure on on tour to change the cover and i obviously we don't know what's going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes but i feel like he could bring his considerable weight uh to push for a cover change yeah because the book is out in may which is plenty of time. You know, I know that publishing runs slowly, but they also run fast when it comes to people who can guarantee a book is going to sell. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Sarah, good one. Yeah. Pay your fucking employees, you know, publishers, you make enough money. Come on. <laughs> uh, Lily, do you have anything in mind? Well, I think any trends I want in content is more of a personal failing of not being able to find what I'm looking for. Mm. <laughs> so I liked Sarah's answer. I am really interested in, in watching this shift from, you know, trad and Indian self pub and sort of how that ecosystem is changing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's pros and cons uh, for <laughs> every side of that equation. Um, but I am Maybe not that I want to see anything in particular, but I'm fascinated to see how that ends up shaking out or how it evolves in the next step. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And in terms of like, just since I started this podcast, the shift in, I guess, sort of um, due respect to, to the indie and self-pub communities in terms of like, the level of quality for writing or book covers and all this kind of stuff. And, and, you know, traditional authors giving props to indie or self pub authors or traditional publishers picking up self pub authors, uh, a friend of mine, Alexander Darwin, who released this really awesome series called the combat codes got picked up by orbit and they're going to re-release the series. And he also has the opportunity to like add 30,000, words or so to the story to like which is something really rare it's like you don't normally hear it's like cut 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 but then for the publisher to be yeah. like no like let it let it breathe a little bit more throw some more world yeah. in there like you know add some more stuff to it uh, which is really cool i just love to see um or like ryan cahill who is you know his his series is getting more and more attention as well and it's like you know, these indie and self-pub authors who are uh, showing their skill and their ability to market themselves. And I think it's going to be like really interesting to see how the traditional publishing world, you know, or like people who are having lots of shakeups like Harper uh, Collins to be like, what the fuck are we doing wrong? And what are the self-pub authors and the indie, the indie authors doing right? What lessons can we learn from them? You know? beyond just like being better people and, and paying people respectable wages. It's like, what, what <laughs> yeah. kinds of lessons can we learn from this, from the indie space, which is, uh, which is really fascinating. Uh, Connor, what about you? Um, hard to really follow up the last two. Uh, like I'm not going to, I'm not really going to be able to really be like, and, and these tropes that I have, like, you know, like, <laughs> I'll throw it out there, man. No, Come on. I mean, no, it's I'm um I really can only echo what, what was already said. Like there was a study that was released earlier I saw about like just the way that um wages for authors have really just plummeted and just across the board. It's just sort of like this industry is really grinding people out and everything. And I really wanna um and again and to echo what Lily was saying, I'm I'm really interested in seeing how um it indie the rise of sort of indie and everything sort of shakes up the playing field. Um, I think it's already led to a lot of re really innovative uh, books uh, and plots, and there's been a lot more diverse um, settings and landscapes and world building, and just a lot more creativity that's been um, sort of um, unleashed on the industry and everything. And I, I'm hoping that will lead to some good things changing down the road. Um, but yeah, I'm just I just got to back up what everyone else was saying. 
Yeah, yeah I hope so too. There, there's actually something that's kind of like building on what what Lily and I were mentioning, where it's like self pub authors and and people writing in the indie space, they have more room for experimentation. Yeah, um, and just that thing of like more experimental uh, sort of like plot structures or approaches to character or like themes that a traditional publisher might be like, eh, like steer away from that. You know, like that's a bit too dicey, yeah, that's, you know, that's actually why I went indie was like, I, I originally queried uh, my books and I, I would get like uh rejection letters from like really big New York agents and stuff who like um, occasionally they come back saying like, this is really good. We are not going to publish it though. It's not, it's too, it's too far outside of any marketable wheelhouse. It's great. We just can't pigeonhole it well enough. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll, I'll put it over here then. Yeah. But then, yeah, that's just, that's just bullshit. I hate, I hate that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's really good, but we can't market it. And it's just like, then figure out how to market it. Cause it's like, yeah, literally if know? it's good, you should be able to find a market for that. Yeah. There's no one being. Really- Man, I wish there were worse books out there with more of like a specific <laughs> niche. Yeah, because it's like so many, so many authors that I met like through the indie space is like they, um, I think just through necessity of being, um, in charge of everything that they do as creators, they're kind of like forced to be like, okay, I created this thing and I really love it, and how the hell do I like get it in front of people? Yeah. And so it's like they out of necessity have have figured out um ways of marketing to people who are looking for more niche stuff. But then yeah. like the traditional publishers like often come in and just kind of like snag that niche and be like this is the hot new shit and then like let's go <laughs> find some people and it's like <laughs> you know so it's a it's a bit of a a weird cycle there but yeah I really appreciate the people who the authors in the indie space who are able to be like, I got this really like weird, you know, kind of stuff or something that, that a traditional publisher, most of it's not like that weird or anything like that. It's not like William yeah. S. Burroughs, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Chris Panettiere got picked up by Angry Robot. So, Hey, um, <laughs> but just to be able to, to find an audience for this kind of stuff, regardless of what an agent might say or an editor or a publisher might say about like, you know, this has potential, but it's not marketable or some, <laughs> you know, yeah. crappy line that they, that they often toss out. All yeah. right. Well, um, just to close out, I want to know each of you, we've been talking about what we're reading in the future, but what are you reading right now or watching or listening to Sarah? What do you have, uh, right now that you're consuming and you want to share with, uh, viewers and listeners? Um, I have uncharacteristically had quite a lot of uh, reading time uh, the past two weeks because I've been on vacation. So I read a lot of Sherwood Smith books, actually, instead of the things that I was supposed to be reading. Connor, you um, just have to go to Antarctica to read <laughs> Sherwood Smith. God, I don't know what I've been doing. I've been slacking. I'm going to fuck myself in. But um, the, the Indus series is actually... Uh, very small portion of her um, much larger uh, storyline that she's been telling over the course of all of her publishing years. Um, And the last book that I read was um, This Wicked Skill or The Wicked Skill. I don't actually remember if it's the or this, um, which follows two characters. Well, a number of characters. Um, It's more romance than like war, unlike Inda, but um, it's quite good. And are you watching or uh, listening to anything? Um, not at the moment, but I do want to watch um, The Sound of the South, which is a documentary written by, um, not written by, produ- um, produced, put on, whatever, by a musician called uh, uh, Ruben Hine, I believe, um, about his trip to Antarctica, um, I think last year. It was recommended to me by one of the crew on the, on the expedition. Um, you got to compare notes. Yes, I do want to compare notes. <laughs> Mostly, I'm just missing Antarctica, and I, I want to, you know, watch some pretty video about it. I'm so jealous. So, for anyone like watching or listening, Sarah just went to Antarctica, and she's a bit jet lagged, but fucking amazing sounding trip. Oh uh, yeah, it was incredible. Documentary sounds really cool too. What was the what was the name of that again? Oh, it's called The Sound of the South, the Sound um, of the South. by Ruben Hine. It's on uh, Vimeo. 
for you can rent it for five dollars or buy it for eight i believe nice very cool and lily what about you well all of my brain juices have been used up for work this last (laughs) month or two so i've been watching the princess switch which is a series of movies with an increasing number of vanessa hudgenses in each one (laughs) lily i have seen the first one and it's really like, good. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like Sarah's all about the switch your brain off. This is like 100 mm-hmm. percent switch your brain off Christmas fuel. Yep. <laughs> did we watch one of those last year? We did. Uh we watched the third one. So I was like, I should watch the first two. She also has a Christmas movie. I really like Vanessa Hudgens called The Night Before Christmas, but it's like K-N-I-G-H-T. Oh, I saw that one last year. That was, I love that movie. <laughs> that was, I love that. There wow. is time it's travel. The most involved. Hallmark thing I've ever seen on Netflix. <laughs> so it's like it's like Hallmark Outlander. Yeah. Yes. Basically. <laughs> but nice. with Vanessa Hudgens. That's awesome. She's really cute. She's a good actress yeah. too. Yeah. I, I my wife was like, you want to watch this? I'm like, yeah, fuck it. And afterwards I'm just like I am not disappointed. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I got to watch. Okay. So how many, how many princess switch movies are there? Three. Okay. So the maximum number of Vanessa Hudgens is you can get is four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are they going to up it to five with the fourth one? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with that. We should write a petition. Yeah. Please, Vanessa. I am more Vanessa. Not a Christmas movie person, <laughs> but I did actually enjoy the Christmas switch three. <laughs> I love the princess switch three. (laughs) That's such a specific Christmas movie to really enjoy out of all of them. Like out of the whole list of Christmas, no, specifically princess switch number three. It's a heist movie, not a Christmas movie. I mean, it takes place. But if it's a heist movie, which makes it fun. It's like the diehard rule of Christmas movies. Yes. Yes. Also, she's a baker, which is like, you Mm -hmm. know. So well, it's Christmas it's totally Christmassy. Yeah. <laughs> baking. Baking, yeah. man. Baking and switching. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> and heists, apparently. Um, Connor, what are you watching or reading or listening to? Well, I know you I know you just you're probably gonna read more Crystal Matar, but um I first really wanted to say that like basically uh Christmas night is basically just Santa pulling off one massive toy heist. <laughs> I just wanted to add that in real quick. But also, I am doing, uh, I'm not reading any of Crystal's books right now, shockingly, I know. But I am doing a buddy read of The Given Day by Dennis Lehane with Crystal, if that counts. All right. Um, And I'm, the more I get through it, the more I see the influence on on her work. And um, I have I have now even more ammo to be like, yeah, no, it's it's a lot like Dennis Lane. I think he'd really like her books. Nice man. I'll yeah. I'll throw out some stuff that I'm I'm currently reading Rosewater by Todd A. Thompson. Uh I'm just doing a lot of like TBR com prep at the moment. So it's like that and then yeah. uh The Surviving Sky by Critica H. Rao. Uh, that was all one of my uh most anticipated actually <laughs> oh it's great so far i'm just reading a lot of stuff about nature and technology oh wow just a little little spoiler for tbr con um <laughs> and then i'm really excited for tbr con and then uh at my wife's behest we're watching the Dahmer series on netflix mm. which is really fucking creepy and uh, really cr- a there's great a, Christmas movie. there is a very specific song by Casey and the Sunshine Band that I will never ever listen to again because oh, that no. ruined it for me. <laughs> so for anyone who's watched Dahmer, uh, they probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so <laughs> I will leave it at that. But uh, Sarah, Lily, and Connor, thank you all for closing out the year with me. Uh, it's a pleasure to hang out with you as always. And I really appreciate you spending this time with me and, uh, you know, being on the show as often as you have. And, and, uh, it means a lot to me. So, so thank you so much. And, um, if you could let everyone know where they can find you on social media, Lily, we'll start with you. 
I am not. Technically, I have accounts, but goodness, do not expect to find me there. <laughs> you can, you can, I know that's the wrong answer. You can pin fiction fans too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, fiction fans is in all of the places at fiction fans pod. Um, Twitter is probably where we're most active because Sarah does that one. <laughs> <laughs> But we're also on Instagram, TikTok, all of those new ones that have popped up recently. I don't remember <laughs> all of their names. <laughs> all the talk But one of them shit. is Mammoth or something. Mastodon. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mammoth. Yeah, let's start a Mastodon rival called Mammoth. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's just the Mastodon logo and a false mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and uh sarah what do you guys have coming up uh on fiction fans in the near future um we uh what do we have coming up i have to turn my brain on from um, <laughs> vacation to, to fiction fans mode the um, reason why we had can to see the buffering over sarah's head <laughs> yes <laughs> we postponed our episode on the monsters we defy because we were able to get an interview with El Penelope. And so to Leslie's, make schedule work. Leslie's awesome. I'm so excited. Oh, you're going to have yeah. a great time. Very <laughs> yeah, but I believe that episode is supposed to come out. We're recording it in early January. I believe mm-hmm. that episode is supposed to come out mid to late January, sometime within the first month of, of the next year. Right on. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, Leslie's great. Um, so I think you're going to have a great time. And I mean, there's lots of heist talk today <laughs> speaking of heist the monsters we defy is also a fantastic book um connor where can people find you and pick up your books too um i am at at the cm kaplan at basically every social media place there is there's twitter instagram um tiktok now i'm on tiktok um i the the fucking mastodon one as well hive i don't know i probably deleted that one i don't actually i don't remember how many new ones there are all the all the places um, where connor's biceps can be found <laughs> yes basically yeah <laughs> every now and then i'll try and post like a thirst trap and see if that will sell any books <laughs> it worked a few days ago it worked a- <laughs> So I'm, you so want to buy like, a book? Bro, bro. Check out my arms, man. <laughs> no, it's basically I'll post a thirst trap and be like, if you'd like to encourage this behavior, you got to buy a book and I'll do more of them. Nice. Yeah. That's good, Mark. Um, yeah. I, I, was, I was proud of it. <laughs> uh, you can get, if you want to encourage me to post more thirst traps, you can find my books on Amazon. <laughs> the sword in the street and uh the fall is all there is you should definitely get the latter one it's much better by connor thirst trap Kaplan. <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it but uh it's great hanging out with you three yeah i i really appreciate it as always and uh this year has been a lot of fun and i i'm, I'm really happy that i saw all of your faces over and over again just chatting books and hearing Sarah's pug snoring is a beautiful time. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs>